Hi friend, most of those who listen to my stories are not subscribed to the channel. As such, please take a few seconds of your time to subscribe and also turn on your notifications so you never miss a new story. Your support is very valuable to me. Thank you so much. And now a new story. Ellen lived in full prosperity from childhood. A nice house, expensive clothes, and regular trips to rest. At the same time, she couldn't be called a spoiled girl, although her parents were very famous businessmen in the city. Their business developed very quickly thanks to the legacy left by their parents. They created capital for a long time, and painstakingly, their children skillfully increased it. Ellen's parents were with higher education, so they quickly learned all the intricacies of the business, and their business went uphill. Nicole and Anthony loved each other, and therefore were very happy about the birth of their daughter. But they approached the issue of education in completely different ways. Mom always tried to pamper Ellen and allowed her a lot, and her father tried to raise a completely independent person from her. Ellen never gave anyone a reason to think that she was the spoiled daughter of a millionaire. The girl perfectly saw how hard it was for her parents to get money, so she didn't demand anything from them. In school years, teachers loved a modest and well-mannered student. Ellen liked to study and learn new things, and she came to graduation with excellent marks. She entered one of the colleges and received a good education. In the depths of his soul, the father was proud of his daughter, but he didn't show it. He was a very stern and wayward person. He said to his wife, there's no need to give her an indulgence. If I praise her, she will become conceited. Let her think that the bar has not yet been reached, and she needs to move forward. After leaving school, Ellen tried to live independently from her parents, giving up luxury. She even tried to get a job, moving around the city a lot. The daughter of wealthy parents didn't have her own car. Her mother wanted to buy her any of the new models, but her father said that no one canceled public transport, putting an end to this issue. Ellen had to ride all over the city for almost a whole day. She got a job as a volunteer and helped poor people in local shelters. Once on the street, she stopped, listening to a beautiful melody. A guitar was playing in the passage, and a guy who was sitting in a wheelchair sang in a magical voice. A box for collecting money was tied to the handle. Ellen timidly approached and said, You have an amazing voice. Is there anything I can do to help you? The guy smiled charmingly, and deep dimples appeared on his cheeks. I don't need anything, only communication with you. Either the dimples on his cheeks or his magical voice, literally everything bewitched Ellen. From that day on, she began to come there almost every day, and after the performance, she took a wheelchair and rolled the singer to the park. Of course, he could move his vehicle on his own, but the girl didn't accept refusals, waiting to take care of him. In the park, they ate ice cream and chatted about everything. During one of these walks, the girl learned that Alex grew up in an orphanage, he was disabled not from birth, but due to a tragic fall. For the first time, Alex spoke for so long as if reliving his life. The circus was not far from the orphanage where he grew up. When Alex was a boy, he often ran there. By the eighth grade, he could easily do some circus tricks. The director of the circus has long been watching a flexible guy with a well-coordinated figure. He even arranged for the orphanage to let Alex go to the circus several times a week. When the guy graduated from school, he was invited to the circus troupe. Everything was going great. Alex was predicted a good circus future. He learned very quickly. The audience was looking forward to a handsome young man in a beautiful suit who performed miracles under the dome. But once the performance of a young acrobat ended tragically, something went wrong. Alex fell into the area from a great height and was unable to stand up on his own. There were screams in the hall and many were crying, pitying the young man. But it couldn't help him. The injuries were very serious. It took time and large financial cost for his recovery. Alex had no money, and the director of the circus immediately after the tragedy forgot about the guy. Ellen tried to help in any way she could. Either she would bring him some clothes, or she would bring him something delicious. Alex soon realized that he was attached to the girl, and he looked forward to her every visit. And Ellen caught herself thinking that she seemed to be missing something in those days when she didn't meet with this guy. Once. Alex sadly said that when they went for a walk, I have only one dream. I want to go to a restaurant with you and invite you to a slow dance. We will definitely order our favorite song several times. I will do my best to achieve my recovery and fulfill my dream. The doctor said that I was not hopeless. I have already raised some money and I will continue to try and earn money for the surgery. That same evening, Ellen told her father about the tragedy and asked for money for Alex's treatment. The father spoke indignantly after a second pause. You're crazy. My mother and I work to operate on the homeless. Why just one? 
Let's cure all the homeless in the city. I don't want to hear about it anymore. He again began to study some documents, making it clear that the conversation was over. Ellen sobbed bitterly in her room, not knowing how else she could help the guy. Her mother tried to calm her crying daughter. Don't be upset. Everything will be fine. Later, you and I will try to talk to your father again. Most likely, he will not refuse. Ellen and Alex met every day. There was no physical intimacy between them, but they became very close to each other in soul. The girl was not afraid of Alex's deplorable state, and she told her father that she was ready to become the guy's wife. Of course, no one made her a marriage proposal, but the daughter decided to annoy her father, who refused to help her. Her father's anger was terrible. He threatened to lock up his daughter and forbade her to talk about Alex in their house. But Ellen still continued to meet with Alex and loved to listen to him sing. She especially liked one lyrical love song. The words and music were completely new and unknown to her, and they literally permeated her soul. The girl decided to record it and publish it on the internet. She hoped in this way to tell everyone about a talented musician in need of help. A beautiful song with a gentle melody quickly spread through social networks. That day, her father Anthony was browsing the internet newsfeed while sitting in an office. He stopped abruptly on one of the videos. Lines with a tear-jerking story from the life of a poor acrobat ran on the screen. The text went along with the song that made the man's heart shrink. At some point, it became difficult for him to breathe and he loosened his tie. He couldn't confuse this song with any other. He repeated several times the motives that excited him. He immediately called the head of security and demanded to urgently find the street singer and deliver him to his office. By evening, Alex was sitting in the office opposite the gray-haired gentleman, silently looking at the guy. The businessman asked in a voice trembling with excitement, turning on the video and showing it to the guy. How do you know this song? Alex didn't understand what was happening, but replied, When I was little, my mother often sang it to me. My mother died when I was not even five years old. A rich guy hit her with his car while running through a red light. I was immediately sent to an orphanage. Anthony tried to hold back his tears as he listened to the guy. His thoughts returned to his student years when he was in love with all his heart and soul. He wrote this song for his beloved Stephanie, so he immediately recognized the familiar tune. Their love was bright and unforgettable, but broke into small pieces unable to withstand the difficulties. Youthful maximalism and Anthony's parents were to blame. They were categorically against a girl from a poor family where her mother worked as a janitor and her father was a loafer and an alcoholic. Shortly after the breakup, Stephanie rented a room on the other side of town and moved out. And Anthony did not listen to his heart, but to the stories of his parents that she had run away with another man. And therefore, he tried to forget her as quickly as possible. They never saw each other again. The businessman burst into tears, asking what the name of the guy's mother was. Perhaps his son was in front of him. Everything seemed to fit. The mother's name, the guy's age, this song. But Anthony decided to make some clarifications. He went to ask for basic information at the orphanage where Alex was raised. The director refused to tell him something for a long time, but the amount offered was able to help in this matter. The mother's name was like that of Anthony's beloved, but the surname was completely different. On the same day, he went to the cemetery, where he found the grave of Alex's mother. A complete stranger looked at him from a portrait on a monument. He became very upset, deciding that a mistake had occurred. But the familiar song was spinning in his head, haunting him. For several nights, the man did not sleep, trying to figure out how the guy and his mother knew the song, known only to him and Stephanie. In the end, he decided to conduct a genetic examination. The result confirmed that Alex was indeed his son. Anthony checked all the documentation from the moment the guy was born, and he became aware that his own mother died in childbirth. The doctors were unable to save the woman. Her close and faithful friend helped the poor man throughout her pregnancy. She was there at the terrible moments of her death and decided to adopt Alex. That woman was also called Stephanie. They were almost always together, and everyone considered them inseparable. A female friend didn't have her own children, so she surrounded Alex with love and care. Friend Stephanie found the song in a notebook that was in the personal belongings of the deceased woman. She learned it and often began to sing to her son. There were many more poems in that notebook that Alex knew by heart. He kept all the notes and carried them through all the years of the orphanage. Older orphans tried a couple of times to tear out the sheets from the notebook, but they received a serious rebuff from the guy, after which they left him alone. Anthony's first concern was the health of his newfound son. After a genetic examination, he found a good clinic abroad, 
where the doctors took over the Alex's examination and further surgery. At this time, the girl was next to him, who now turned out to be his sister. Ellen was with the guy from the first minute and went to the clinic without hesitation. The father was glad that at such a moment, a relative would be with Alex. After the surgery, Ellen literally taught her stepbrother how to walk from scratch. Otherwise, he would have moaned in pain or given up. Now he tried only to smile, saying, We will succeed, sister. Almost a year later, he was able to get out of the plane on his feet, leaning on his sister's arm. Two years later, Alex danced better than others at his sister's wedding, winking at the beautiful bride. He moved perfectly and already began to forget about the terrible times of life in a wheelchair. Now, he moved perfectly on his feet, studied in absentia, and in the evenings performed at a local club. He categorically refused the material assistance of his father. He said that he himself could earn money, but at the same time, he was ready to help them in everything, gladly coming to their house. Soon, he had another unspoken duty. After the birth of their first child, the half-sister decided to make Alex the godfather. He happily began to take care of the baby. Ellen said, sometimes laughing, Kevin will be confused about who his real father is. The godfather spends more time with him than his own dad. But it was just a joke that everyone understood. <laughs>